So um, thank you for joining me today. Really honored to have uh, Adam and Mara join us from Reveal. So let's, um, let's start with um, a bit about yourselves. So tell me about each of you, your background, what brought you together and why you're the best people to carry um, forward the vision of a Reveal. No, we really appreciate the opportunity, Shaila, and uh, with the whole Uplift team, you guys are fantastic. You know, as a background in cybersecurity many years ago, I realized that, you know, there's a lot of enterprise companies that are trying to protect themselves, but no one's really protecting the little guy. And over the years, I got just fascinated with the blockchain space. In 2016, we got involved. And at that time, you know, people were just learning about NFTs. The metaverse was not even thought of. And people wanted to find a way that they can get involved. And so as an advisor, as a thought leader, as somebody that really trying to help people find their way in this industry, we saw that there was a real major need as people learn more and more about the NFT space and learn more about where things are going, that they need some type of cyber protection. And so we created Reveal as an idea to be able to provide not only a, a, a digital, but also a physical security and having a, a pretty diverse background and understanding of security. We know that Many people that are in this space, they don't really understand that if you don't protect yourself, you know, you open yourself up for risk in every different area. So when you hear it every day in the news, it became something that we had to absolutely just combat because we've gotten scammed ourselves over the years and falling for things. And me and Mo met years ago in 2016, we met and we both were involved in the ICOs and the wild, wild west and got a chance to, you know, see the ups and downs of the market and really follow this industry as close as you can. And as a thought leader and understanding the XR space, the virtual reality, you know, um, augmented reality, as well as AI, you know, the whole thing with DAOs and DeFi into the NFTs and the metaverse, you know, put us in a position where we really can potentially help everybody through our project. Absolutely. A little bit about myself. I uh, want to thank you again for giving us the time and, uh, it's a privilege to be working with your team. The last little while that we have met Alex, yourself, Irina, which we know from the past, the team is first class. I'm really surprised and uh, honored to be working with you guys. It's, it's, um, it's definitely a privilege seeing how the team dynamics involved. I didn't know you, uh, Uplift, has such a big team and such diverse uh, backgrounds, but now that I meet people in in the Uplift team, and I'm 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 kind of surprised because I don't I don't even know how many people you got. You guys got so many people, and I'm looking at Nicole, yourself, Irina, Alex. There's so many people that are first class, and the more we talk to them, the more we I realize that we're working with the right launchpad, with the right platform, and coming for the community. I probably know most of the people and the leaders that are going to be listening to this. Just a little bit about my background. People know I've built organizations over half a billion people, sales, blah, blah, blah. However, one thing that a lot of people have uh, don't have the insight on, I've been in the crypto space myself with Adam for the past six and a half years, losing a lot, winning a lot, uh, getting involved, everything from the ICOs to the NFTs, to the metaverse, to the gaming, you name it, to the DeFi's, you name it all. I advised over 30 different projects been a co-founder of a few. We're co-founding and partnering with some other projects that are coming up with Singapore, very big projects as well. So I have a very diverse uh, background in the crypto space and uh, the experience and the knowledge I've learned working with so many different projects like Power Ledgers and so many different, the coin payments and so on. It's given me the opportunity to understand this industry, see the pitfalls, see what the projects, when you're advising a company from A to Z from the beginning, it gives you a really good chance to see what, what they've done right, but also what they have failed to do to make their projects prosperous long-term. So utilizing all these aspects have given me a diverse background and the intelligence to be able to put something together that is much needed, especially like Adam said, this project that we're coming for is an absolute need in an industry. I hope that answers your question. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for all the complimentary things you said about Uplift and the team. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, it's really good um, to hear 
that you're a team with a diverse background and you've got extensive experience. So you've learned from your experience in crypto, from winning, from losing, from seeing it evolve from what it was back in 2016, 17 with the ICOs to, to what it's become today. So um, that's a wealth of experience. And like we, we um, applaud that sort of experience and that's really what we need. And that's what we need from project leaders, um, the, that sort of experience, authentic experience okay brilliant so if you were to summarize well, let's say if they have to um how would you summarize um in an elevator pitch what reveal it is so you've got say 45 seconds tell me what it is the easiest way to say it is if you think of a gia certificate for a diamond to authenticate that it actually is a real diamond we actually do the same thing for digital media right we created a really sexy, elegant interface. It has a pinch to reveal media through a digital watermarking protection and we can authenticate it later on pretty much any platform on or offline. And obviously our goal is to be able to provide peace of mind for both the IP creators as well as people who are investing in the space and buying NFTs and digital assets. Okay, perfect. So just to expand on that, when you say you are watermarking or you, you you have a vision to watermark NFTs and digital assets. What what sort of included in digital assets? Is it sort of just like artwork and things like that? What would be included in the digital? Yeah, so starting off with starting off with you have 2D and of course the ability to have a pinch to reveal where you can see the, the digital watermarking of both a tag for an artist as well as you know the authentication that is protected by reveal, as well as it's going to go into avatars and digital land and videos and you know, 3D and, and all of the things that are, are going to be needed as a digital asset in the future, we'll be able to protect. Perfect. Okay. So basically beyond NFTs, just generally digital content, right? Yes. Digital yes. things on, on blockchain. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much for that explanation. So um, um, there's so many different application fields for real tech. And um, I would like to know if you could tell us a bit more about some of the, the encompassing, um, so how it's encompassing your solution. So tell us a bit about the technology and um, the different applications that will help make it work. I actually uh, had, a, had a chance to really dig in and since the background in cybersecurity, we realized that we needed to have something that is going to provide a 360 protection all the way around, right? So we can bring our technology, whether it be in the digital publishing space, the ad tech space, the medical, biometrics, Department of Defense, but we also allow us to be able to really combat all of the fraud that's going on out there by providing a registry that checks to see if already that there's problems in the marketplace that are, the product is already out there. And so we wanna make sure that we're not gonna protect we're not gonna protect the digital media with something that's already out there, right? We don't wanna protect the fraud with the fraud, right? So we wanna make we want to make sure that it is able to have a check of all of the databases out there. So we do a perceptive hash check to see all of the different spaces that are out there. And we're able to put ourselves in a position where we're able to cross-reference a reveal ID. And that reveal ID is gonna be able to be that GIA certificate protection. Then we're able to, once that technology, we're able to put our digital watermark protection in it, and then we can authenticate it later through an art, as, as an application layer, an API. We're able to do that on a security-centric marketplace to test it, and then we're able to do it on any marketplace after that. Absolutely. And uh, just to come back on the first question you asked, Adam and I actually are in Costa Rica of some of the most beautiful places. Then we'd be coming to Dubai which we're going to meet some great people and uh, great events. We'll be speaking that. However, simply put for myself, when I saw this technology and I realized it's something that's not just a great opportunity for people to get in. Uh, again, I just want to do a quick disclaimer. Uh, we're not financial advisors. We're not here to give any financial advice or tips. And uh, this is all for just our own opinion. However, when I saw this uh, technology and I said, this is something that's needed, I actually had a great talk with Adam. I said, OpenSea will have a lot of problems coming up with people trying to phishing attacks, people trying to 
uh, counterfeit other people's NFTs. And there's going to be so much misinformation and junk out there that the, uh, the OpenSea is just so big that they cannot deal on all the artists. They're not able to deal with what's happening because first of all, security is not sexy. Let me just, uh, as an investor in, a, in the past, in the crypto space, we learned a lot of people as newbies, they just fall blind leading the blind. And they blindly follow people. They don't want to put the time and education that we have to understand this industry. And myself, I'm all about the technology. I'm all about decentralization, the advancement of public rights and people being able to take the power back and put it in the people's hand instead of the institutions. And that's what I'm really excited about the uh, cryptocurrency, especially about Reveal. What we're doing is we're giving people, uh, artists, a chance to protect themselves. We're a B2B product with a B2B solution as well. So when we see reveal, we have many different factors that we could we all could come to. We could talk about this later on coming up. However, as an opportunity that a lot of people, unfortunately, they're not here for the technology or security, but they all ask, what is the opportunity? The opportunity is this space needs wonderful security when they need things for protection because they, instead of three-letter agencies being coming in and policing people, we want to be able to regulate from within. And we believe Reveal will be the standard. Like Adam said, he says something really incredible that stuck in my mind, the GIA certificate. When we go stamp that diamond and you want to see if it's real, you think Reveal. So we're very excited about the future and uh, what we got. And to add to that, you know, Shaila, the, the the idea of having a B two B solution with a B two C brand allows us to be able to really get the reveal name out into every household that is getting involved in the digital media space and they want to protect themselves in the metaverse, right? I mean, unfortunately, people go out there blindly; they don't really know what they're doing. And a lot of people, when they go on a lot of the channels and the clubhouses and things like that, they they really talk right over their head in information that doesn't really do them much justice because they can't figure out a lot of the acronyms and things people say. And what we want to do is we want to make it simple, understand that we can have a graphical user interface that they are able to communicate and see that we have them protected, that we care about them as a buyer and as a creator of this technology, as a creator of IP, we want to be able to tie those two together with our technology to give them that peace of mind as an artist, as well as a buyer. And I think that's super important. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much for um, that answer. Um, so that, that's really interesting you say that. Like, So um, what you're saying is that from your experience, you've experienced that you, you are aware of the pitfalls, you are aware of the, um, the vulnerabilities of um, the, the system and the way things are at the moment. You understand that it's not accessible for, you know, people coming who are new to the space and um you're what you're trying to do is set a standard from within the community so that we don't have an external regulator telling us what to do you're saying this is the standard that everybody needs to work towards and that that's really welcomed and that's something that the community the crypto community will encourage because they obviously want to they don't want to listen to outsiders they want to listen to people who actually know what they're talking about and have the experience and the world's experience that you, that you guys have so um yeah, so that, that's really, really interesting that you mentioned that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is um, it's really good that you touched on the point about your brand being B2B as well as B2C, because then for, um, for it's, it's important for our, your, your investors to understand that the um, with, with it being B2B, it's not just like a standalone project waiting for people to come to them. There's loads of opportunities to become the stamp of approval on these various marketplaces and other digital um, platforms. So um, actually, while we touch on that, it, could you tell me if, there, if you have, um, if there's any partnerships that you can mention or any partnerships down the line that we could um, before Adam it. speaks to that, he likes to jump on and uh, reveal things before it uh, before we can actually come out. However, what we can tell you is we have some very good, great uh, partnerships that are very exciting, and some that we have already uh, concluded. Uh, we just can't reveal just yet, 
But what we can reveal at the moment is we have some amazing partnerships, NFT technologies, IBC. We have uh, incredible uh, advisors on the project. We have incredible VCs. And uh, we are about, maybe you like to just touch upon the metaverse and the mall and what, you know what? We cannot yeah, say yeah, the we can, theme. Or, we can share a couple of things with you. Yes, yes, and I'm going to share real quick. And uh, so two things. One is, of course, we're excited. We work with uh, the HBAR Foundation with Hedera. As you know, um, that technology is very exciting where that's going. And then, of course, most people don't know this, is that uh, we actually, uh, as uh, individuals, actually just uh, purchased with um, a, a group of us or a syndicate, if you will, a handful of us, um, a floor in a hundred story luxury digital mall of the metaverse uh -huh. with metaverse and metaverse, M-E-T-A-V-R-S-E. -E. And um, so we haven't announced it officially, but um, Alan Smithson from uh, metaverse is actually uh, coming on as an advisor for our project, thought leader in the, in the XR space, which is your virtual and augmented reality. So we'll have 100,000 square feet on floor 88 in the Mall of the Metaverse that we'll be able to protect with Reveal along with the rest of the mall, which will give more details once that's all solidified and finalized. And each one of those 100 floors is, a, is able to expand out to a million square feet of digital luxury space. And the bottom 20 floors are all the biggest brands you can possibly think of that are going to be in that mall. So that's just one of the announcements that we, we can't announce everything else we've got and Tell you a little bit about NFT technologies. They are actually going to be listed anywhere from 30 to 60 days on the NEO exchange, which is the Canadian stock exchange under the ticker NFT. And on their cap stack, which it is public knowledge, but they have uh, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. They have um, um, Jeremy Gardner, who's an OG in the industry for many years, as well as you know, the, the Paul brothers, <laughs> Logan and uh, Jake Paul and so on. And so um, we're excited to work with some really major players in the industry. And, um, you know, when we look at the technology and where it's going and building on the Hedera blockchain, even the mall of the metaverse, they decided out of all of the top choices of blockchain, they could go to any one of them. They decided to use Hedera because it was an enterprise solution and it's a hybrid between decentralized and centralized, which I think you need a little bit of both. And to go back to touch base of what you said earlier, I think we need some governance, right? You know, what Mo said, everybody wants to have decentralization, but if you want to appeal to the masses, which we do, we need to have something that's a, an easy interface that allows the, the, the DGEN, if you will, the person who wants to connect their wallet to MetaMask and the person who wants to use the credit card and they want to log in with their you know, simple login, right? And they want to get an avatar that they don't have to like figure out how to build it. They just choose a picture and boom, there it is. So we want to make sure that they have that protection while they're going through that process and we make it as simple as possible. Absolutely. Just to touch on what Adam has said, uh, this is actually a huge deal for the, I don't know if sir, first time, we're actually the golden boy of Hedera, you know, I shouldn't say Hedera, HBAR Foundation. They actually got a $5 billion fund that they have uh, put for the foundation to support projects like us. So we're well funded. Uh, HBAR, uh, we're not just launching on their, pro on their uh, platform. What we're doing is actually a partnership, which uh, you could see they retweeted more importantly, once we do the AMAs and they come out and people have not yet learned about Hedera Hashgraph. Hedera HRBAR Foundation is one of the most significant platforms that I wouldn't want to say chain, they're not actually a chain. You could look at the, their technology and you could see the governance they have on online. Go to Hedera Hashgraph and look at it. Google, LG, Council, Ubisoft, look at the governance council. And we'll touch up on that a little later. They got the most sophisticated, most incredible names behind them. And just for us to be able to say we're partnered with somebody that's got that much credibility and just a little bit of tip, this is not financial advice. If you're looking for something long-term, Hedera is going to be a beast because we're talking to these team all the time. We're understanding what they're doing, what their smart contract coming out with all the things they got coming out this year. I would not be uh, very surprised if Hedera hits the top six, top 10 for sure within next year. Uh, short term, I'm not going to make any predictions, but my personal prediction is they're going to be a force to reckon with. And they got all the partnerships, all the brands that are Fortune 100 companies, and nobody really knows about them unless you're in the enterprise solution. However, 
I cannot say much, but we're in talks yeah. with some for, Fortune 100 companies, which we will be announcing right after the TGE as well on third level talks. So very excited. I'm not going to mention any names because our board will just kill us if I do tell, uh, you know. Absolutely. I, I and, you know, to, to add to that, you know, the Hedera Foundation, the governing council has actually 39 of the biggest companies in the world. and They've chosen 26 of them. And one of those companies just came out the other day was Ubisoft, which is one of the biggest gaming companies in the world. But they have, like you said, they have like LG, they have Google, they have DLA Piper, they have DBS Singapore. I mean, they, the list goes at Standard Charter Bank. I mean, some of the biggest banks in the world. So they have every sector covered from an industry perspective. And so they're really well-rounded. And, and unlike blockchain, that's why they're, they're a hybrid. They actually run their nodes for each one of these major Fortune 100 companies runs a node. And so that's why they're a governing council. So we're not only utilizing them to build our coin, the coin, but uh, the reveal coin, but we're also going to use them for their consensus layer as one of our security layers and one of many security layers to protect our technology. So yeah, it was actually a very tough, tough decision because we were we are very close with the Phantom team, as you can see in our website. We have a lot of good connections with different blockchains. But for us, once we took the Hedera hash graph. And uh, when people see the H bar, what they really got coming up in the next few years with their transaction fees, with their uh, with their uh, transactions never never increasing, with their fees, it's just incredible to see the results they're gonna have. So uh, yeah, we're very excited about the future. Unfortunately, we cannot tell you all the things, but we could tell you we got some of the biggest advisors that you could think of. We do got Alphabet, uh, we do got Launch Pool and all these sort of stuff. However, some of the biggest advisors we have got, we will be announcing in the next couple of weeks. Just to let you know, they're very big. They're very well versed. They own a lot. They own, they own each, their own platforms, multiple, multiple projects, and they're well, well, well versed in this industry. And we realized one of the things with, I don't want to go too long. I'm just so passionate about what, what this industry we could do is we have assembled one of the greatest teams in my personal experience, not just from the market makers that have taken uh, taken uh, Terra Luna from 10 cents to $100. Now it's around 50 bucks. The market's correcting a bit. And other projects, three, 400 times, stable, stability. We have... Uh, the best uh, ICO managers uh, that have been able to give us the float. Uh, Adam could tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, I can I can elaborate on that, but I, I want right, Shyla to just have more than happy to answer any questions. Your community, of course, is, wants to die to know certain things, so feel free to ask us. We'll 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 get a little deeper into that. You know, you know what, Shyla is really good to get information out of us. You can't get me too excited because I might reveal a little bit too much than I could. Then I, I have to pay for it later. But let's go on to the next question. Go ahead, Shala. I really, really appreciate the, all the exclusive information that you gave to me. So that's going to get everybody really excited. So um, you've bought a space in the metaverse. So you just went through a few things there that were immense. So I need to slow down, digest, uh, unpack it all. Um, so you've bought a massive space in, in the metaverse, which is in, a, in the shopping mall, which is going to have lots of high end names. Um, in your on your shopping mall and they were going to be I guess branded reveal because they're going to have that extra layer of security from reveal you've got um, a big huge um, support from um, Hedera Hashgraph themselves which I was going to move on to later on but we might as well let's talk about it your token is going to be on on Hedera Hashgraph which is like um, how it explains like sleeping giant so it's about to um, I, I think more than anything, it's just about the education. People need to understand what it's capable of to understand what it is. And, and um, it's going to be a very big deal because, like I said, they've got they've got the partnerships and, you know, all these projects that are involved um, already. So all these, um, you know, Fortune 500 companies, et cetera, are already on board uh, with with them. And they, they last year they, they partnered with Google. Um, so they are doing really well in the space, but it's just, I feel like they're not in, like it's a lady, they're not in that Legion vibe. They're not in that sort of um, circle. They're more into enterprise solutions with the top Fortune 100 companies, like you're saying, correct. 
Yeah. And they don't um, they don't sort of define themselves as a blockchain because they're not the distributed ledgers um, technology, um, like I said, running nodes, all, all the different um, participants and they, they will run a node each. So, yeah, so it's really interesting and, and it's worth researching if you don't know much about Hedera Hashgraph. Absolutely. So it's got me really excited about all these partners and things that you've been talking about. So I just wanted to move on to another exciting thing that I read in your white papers. I know that it's you know, much further down the line, but from hearing what you've just said, it doesn't seem like it's something that's far-fetched or, you know, fantasy. It seems like it's something that is within your grasp. It's something that you could do. So I did read in your um, white paper um, that you were looking to not just become like the stamp of approval or, you know, the standard of uh, authentication across um across crypto but what you also would like to do is have your own version of like your own digital collectibles and um, so your own version of these nfts and um, they're going to be called m and and you're partnering with some big people um for this so sorry bob like bringing it up again and you don't really want to no, it's, it's, it's okay exclusive. it's okay we we appreciate it you know um when we first started we realized that we're we have some of the some of the people that are a part of the core team they have background in high level digital collectible toys and they work with like Mattel and things of that nature. And we know that from a blockchain and engineering perspective that there's ways that we can merge the two worlds together between the physical and the digital, right? So we will have underneath the reveal umbrella, the m and brand, which down the road, because we really realize that the problem is so such a problem right now that we want to focus on that first, but we are actually going to build a digital collectible that'll emanate positive energy that has an app that communicates between one, like you could have it on your desk and have a little emanate on your desk and I can have an emanate on my desk and I can send an emoji between the two, but it also allows us to collaborate and communicate between the art world as well as communicate from an NFT because it's a digital NFT, a digital collectible, as well as a physical. And we were in high level talks with Vivi and David Yu and, and uh, we actually were going to launch the emanate once we get a little further down the roadmap and uh, they have about a hundred different licenses under VV, they'll probably be the biggest player in the space of digital collectibles that they'll ever be, but mm -hmm. not to shine the light away from what we're doing, but we wanted to provide some type of protection from a digital, as well as a physical perspective from a anti counterfeit and, and protection and have something that actually can bridge the world between the two. And we have a platform. They have like, I think 600,000 plus active, people that are involved in the digital collectible space. Imagine how big the digital, the, the collectible space is. And as you know, Vivi is the digital collectible, like platinum version of like the, the collectible world, right? So I just want to kind of uh, share a I little bit about stop Adam as well as yourself. <laughs> we have an incredible roadmap coming up. However, I'm always the student of mastering the basics from level one, getting to level two, once we mastered and get the MVP in, uh, in, uh, by, the, by summertime, then we could always talk about what we have coming up, which we got a big roadmap. However, we don't want to confuse people and my personal pet peeve in companies. Not that say we don't, we have a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal roadmap that if you look into our marketplace, what we're going to do with the NFT marketplace that's security center, that we go, what we have coming up is absolutely a game changer. However, now I want to back it up to where we are today. Our main 100% goal is to come to an MVP, make sure that MVP is solid, is tested on our secured uh, marketplace, on our uh, closed play uh, center, market center place. And we have that first and foremost uh, down the line. We have perfected it. Once we have then licensing and all this stuff, comes next. So a lot of companies talk about, especially the metaverse. I'm a pet because I, I'm a pretty big geek when it comes to studying NFTs, metaverses, uh, gaming. They talk about all these huge things. And when you look at the roadmap, it's all hogwash. Not saying we are because they're selling you a dream. They're selling you something that's not real. One day we're going to conquer the moon. Yes, but the first step is you got to get to the car. You got to put on your GPS. You got to go from Florida to Chicago or whatever the case may be. However, they're always talking about such a big future, but they never come to an understanding of, listen, the, the thing is you got to hit your roadmap. And one of my personal pet peeves is not, uh, not doing what you say 
and saying all these big things and not really realizing our main focus, I just want to reiterate to everybody, is to get the MVP out. And that's our uh, promise to everybody by summertime or by the, you know what I mean? That's probably the latest. We're going to have much sooner. However, we want to have, we don't want to be one of these companies that don't have their MVP, that don't have a working product, that don't have a commercial viable product coming up. If you look the top 20 coins, go do your research. So many of them, I would say majority of them don't even have a viable working product. And I'm thinking to myself, what the heck are they doing in the cryptocurrency space when they don't have a working product? So I just get excited because I realized in the cryptocurrency space, people say so much promises, but they never deliver. So one of the things we want to do is under promise and over deliver. So Amen. I always want to come back and say our next step, this is what we're going to do. This is what we promised. And this is the next step we're going to do. So I, I don't want to cut you off. And to add to that, guys, just a rocket ship is off course on its way to the moon. 99% of the time, they're course correcting, right? So whenever you're a startup and you're getting started, you obviously have, you want to shoot for the for the stars, but you, at least you'll land on the moon. And so I know that, that that idea that he said in regards to let's focus on what's right in front of us, where's the problem at hand? How do we get to something that people can actually use when it's badly needed? That minimal viable product is so important to get to, right? Security centric marketplace, provide a 360 approach to protect people to launch the product, to feel comfortable having their product up there to be able to buy it securely. And down the road, we create the API that allows us to plug in and authenticate on any platform. One day, our, our hopes and our vision is, is that you won't be able to go to a platform unless, hey, I, if this isn't protected by a reveal and I can't authenticate it, how do I know I have the real reveal? Like We really want to get to the point that any marketplace would actually say, hey, we now have a standard and we don't have to create our own because the only other idea out there or maybe competition, if you will, is a lot of people have these closed ecosystems. And they say, okay, as long as you're inside of our ecosystem, you're safe. As soon as you go outside, you're no longer safe. We want to protect it regardless if you're inside or outside our space, as well as our technology is blockchain agnostic, which I think is really important to know that we come in literally at the creation level. We're not at the smart contract level. We're prior to the minting. So that's, I think, a very important people to understand that we can literally protect cross-platform and, and we can be authenticate on any, any platform that down the road has our authentication. And of course, we're going to beta test it and really battle test it on our security-centric marketplace. We do have the options of reminting after as well, put the golden tickets as well to be able to do much, much greater things. Like, like I said, we just want to stick to what's ahead, what's next, because if we start talking about the future, I'm one of those visionaries that gets very excited if I don't think about the next step ahead, what we need to achieve, it could, I've seen this before. Uh, I just want to tell you, Shala, I worked and advised 30 different companies in the blockchain. That's not a small task. That's probably one of the highest in the industry advising so many different companies from Power Ledgers, you name it. One thing I did learn, the companies that made it always had the next step in mind and they thought long vision. So one of the biggest mistakes companies do, do have is I learned from is they have so many ideas and so many great things. They never get anything accomplished because now tomorrow something else comes. Uh, Adam and I know so many companies that have been talking about a year and a half. They haven't even done step zero because they haven't even got this start because they have such a big plan and they can't ever put it together because they're always trying to perfect it, add to it, but they don't realize one, two, three, four. And one of my greatest mentors in life, I'm a huge on mindset, uh, Kevin Trudeau has uh, learned big from him. And he said, you want to be a master. You got to master the basics. So uh, that's one thing that's always stuck by me. And uh, we want to make sure if people come, realize that reveal will always under deliver, under promise and over deliver. And uh, we are going to do what we say. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Um, so that's amazing. So basically what you're saying is you're saying like, hold it, you know, rein it back in. And although VV sounds like such an amazing partnership and if people aren't, you know, aware of them, you know, you should research them. They've, they've partnered with the biggest um, companies out there like Disney and Marvel. So um, they're, they're really, really big deal in the NFT space. So, so definitely worth looking up. So 
But what you're saying is you don't want to be one of those companies who has some sort of tenuous link with another project and then they, you know, hang on to that name and, you know, promote themselves or hype themselves based on something that might be possible, you know, if, you know, a few years down the line, you know, if they even survive that long. You're saying you're looking at, you know, that you're looking at short term initially, like what you need to do. So you're not going to be like a short sighted project that's just going to build a hype collect the money and then go you're like no we want to actually build a minimum viable product that's our main aim and you're not going to sort of you know use these a pipe dream sort of um roadmaps that potentially won't even happen um so yeah a lot of a lot of um projects are guilty of that and also piggybacking on people's names that they haven't even formed partnerships with so I really respect that you don't want to disclose anything until it's watertight and it's certain you're not just like you know dropping names for you know the cloud basically you're you're making sure that you've secured it and it's all done dusted before you can mention it so I really respect that you're not just um you know just throwing names out there just you know um just sound like you've done you know, you've made like X, what, you know, 20 partnerships or whatever it might be. Um, so I know that you, you get to say something, Adam, and I'm going to let you in a minute. But um, I just wanted to go back to the token. So we went back, we talked about hash graphs and, and HBAR and things. Going back to that, can we talk about the actual utility of um, your token? Um, and do you have like the ticker for it yet? And you know what it's going to be called? And um, what will be the... Um, what will be the utility? What will it be used for? So, no, absolutely. So the utility, which is really important, is that when you have a registry that's going to cross-reference the digital, every time the digital watermark technology is going to go into an NFT, if you're a GIA certificate and you actually get a diamond, they actually put a, an insignia of an, of an ID number on the diamond itself. So we need to have not only a check of what's out there, but we want to have a fingerprint of exactly the basically time date stamp with perceptive hashing to check if it was out there before we even allow it. And now we're able to have an ecosystem with a distributed ledger that actually cross-references a reveal ID that allows us to be able to later authenticate. And so the utility of the reveal token is to be able to be that reveal ID. That's that diamond GIA number that protects what it is in the registry. And so when you think about the, the reveals ecosystem, it's going to grow and it's going to have other aspects down the road. I can't promise anything now, but we're going to reward those that have diamond hands. We're going to obviously give some you know, special things to people that are VIP in regards to utilizing our token for different things. But up front, it really is something that is needed for us to be able to utilize it. And we've actually had uh, legal opinions done that are US, UK, and Asia confirm that we are considered a utility, not a security at the moment. So just and on top of what Adam just said, just to be very clear to your members, we are not uh, open to the U.S. Uh, we're not promoting right now to the U.S. Uh, entities and U.S. members unless they're very close friends and family with the uh, with uh, credit must. Even then, we have the we have uh, just because unfortunately with the regulatory and we seen what happened with Ripple, we decided we want to do things hundred uh, percent on point. And uh, right now. Hopefully, seeing what's coming down the line with regulatory issues, USA needs to catch up to the rest of the world. It's because they're falling behind. We're talking to our uh, friends in Singapore, and we got some major, and I'm telling you, these guys are going to set us up uh, with credit cards, with staking on the cards, which is bit, is going to be, these guys are massive. No one in the, in the Western world even knows about them. We're going to partner up with them. People could use our, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just, uh, just realize that. They, 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 uh, you need they, to wind uh, it back in there, brother. They, <laughs> they get, they, can't let the cat out of the bag. No, no, they, they, they gone on and said, Listen, uh, you they're want to partner with us. Yeah, yeah, they want to however, with us. they're going so far ahead of technology. And they told us in confidence, they said the US is going to be so left behind because of their own way, they can't get out of their own way. South Korea, Singapore, these come, Dubai. Dubai is coming. I love Dubai. I'm actually a resident of Dubai. I got my cars the other month. So I'm really for looking forward to coming to Dubai. I, they understand technology and advancement. I don't want to go all into it. However, uh, we got some really, really exciting things we're going to share just before 
once you guys launch just before the TGE times, we have all these big influencers who are ready to uh, some of the biggest name you guys know, seven to 10 days before the TGE. And we got tier one exchanges lined up. And before that comes, we got fight advice from the highest level to do all our marketing seven to 10 days. Unfortunately, the people in the crypto space have such short memory. They don't want to even look at two minute video. What do you mean two minute video? <laughs> what did you say to me in one minute, one second, two seconds. So they have such short memory span. We will have incredible things coming up just before the launch. And we realize we need to do the marketing. And uh, most, most companies realize, think that they fail. They fail to market their technology. You could have the greatest project like, and there are other projects, just because they don't know marketing and they don't realize how important the hype and marketing is, they don't get that traction. But for us, like we build some of the biggest networks in the world. Building networks and communities is my specialty, our specialty. So anyways, just, uh, and we've been on a whisper campaign because we are first in the US, we had to come to the TGE side. So now we're opening up our marketing. People will see what we have. You'll see, you'll hear a lot, just to tell you a little bit, you'll hear a lot about reveal from your favorite YouTubers, TikTokers, and so on. And, and to add to that, we have, so, so to go back just a little bit, and we have key opinion leaders, of course. We want to make sure that a couple, a couple of weeks before the TGE, we realized, like he said, like Mo said, in 30, 60 days, you totally forgot about it. You saw 10 projects by the time you get to see it. So we want to make sure that it's fresh in your mind, that we obviously are going to launch. We're super excited to work with Uplift. Obviously, you guys are rocking it. You have incredible projects. And we are truly appreciative of that. And uh, you know, we want to make sure that we're able to build into the TGE on the Tier 1 exchanges and really be positioned so we can absolutely be a long-term project. You know, I spoke on stage a while back with Brock Pierce. One of the things that he said, he said some of the best times of development for projects is during a bear market. Absolutely. Not the bull market because everybody's super excited on a bull market. Everybody thinks they're an expert. And everything's going like through the roof. But at the end of the day, nobody's really taking the time to really build something that has value. And we're just, you know, slow and steady is going to build the race, or win the race. And that's what we're doing. We're making sure that we do it the right way, like Mo said. And we're able to actually put our roadmap in place, get to a minimum viable product, actually roll out our announcements, keep the excitement so everybody realizes that we're just going to keep growing and growing and growing in the space. So we, we're really excited, as you can tell. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for that answer. And it's really important that you touched on marketing because I've heard as well from my experience in blockchain as uh, the short term memory like of the um in of the of the crypto space and you know the people who who follow the projects and you, they they recommend the marketing companies sort of recommend that don't go for like a three three month, you know, um what you call it. Constantly like, marketing before the event. Yeah, it, like a cycle, like do like a three month cycle. You can, you know, it's better just to have like a thirty day or even a three week cycle that that's going to stick in people's heads because you just become old news really quickly. Obviously, that probably changes depending on like the market, you know, whether it's an, you know a bull market or a bear market at the time. So I'm sure like it, it differs, but it is interesting that a lot of people say that about the crypto space, and you don't really hear that anywhere ever. Like outside of crypto, you don't really hear that same. Um, advice for marketing like it, they, they'd say you know keep it constant and you know long or whatever um so I'm gonna start wrapping the call up now guys so don't hate me <laughs> but um I just wanted to ask like one last question about so really excited to hear all of this stuff that you're going to be doing right all these partnerships all of these uh marketing efforts and people that you're going to be partnering it with in, in now and in the future can you tell us a bit about timelines MVP, when's it? When's the? When are you launching it? When will be your testing phase? Because I, I imagine you're in testing phase right now. And um, the other thing is, can you tell us more about the TGE? When will the TGE be? And do you have like a timeline for like when you'll be closing, say the IDO and and then the TGE, so so our investors have a bit of um a, a information about that. Sure, sure. So we're obviously aggressively working towards a minimal viable product. We want to have it built we want to have it available on a secure marketplace we say in the summer probably in you know, the april time frame may time frame but probably april we obviously are consistently building out the api the application protocol interface that is going to be able to go into any marketplace and that's probably looking at the end of the second quarter to the third quarter of the year 
And even that'll be a minimal viable product. We'll be doing battle testing on it. And then of course, to a commercially viable product for, again, we're talking about the digital. And then we'll also have phased rollouts of what the technology can do. And so it'll start off in the 2D and then it'll go into the 3D aspect of it. And we're looking at the commercial viable product at the end of like Q4 of this year, possibly into the beginning of next year and our physical decoder technology. And then over that time frame, we'll be announcing our major Fortune 100 <laughs> potential partnerships and customers that will be utilizing our product as it becomes a commercially viable product that we can roll out in the marketplace. Absolutely. Just uh, I'll add, I'll ask Adam uh, just when I finish to just tell you about quick, quick background, why we have these Fortune 100 companies in our, we are even lucky and uh, grace and uh, one, and uh, blessed enough to be able to get in talks on third level talks. And just before I go on to that, I always look for the benefit of people. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. That's all my own opinion. However, if it was me investing in something, I look at Sheila. Literally, I look at two or three different projects. People pitch me, either become a co-founder or they become an advisor or invest. I get pitched three times a day on new projects. We've been able to get in seed rounds, make two, 300. We have some X's and we've done well. Like, you know what? This is the money is not the main object to get something and to have a name out there to become a lot lasting company that people really add value to the world. That's our mission. That's my mission personally. Adding another zero would not change my life any other way. I'm not a big spender. Uh, people that know me, I like. I don't go out and wear like super fancy watches. I like to stay lower and uh, more, more, uh, more. My means. <laughs> However, what I wanted to say as an investor, we always look for myself. I always look at if I'm starting a company, not saying it's my company or it's anyone's company, what would I want to see in a team? We hired tokenomic expert, Jason Fernandez, some of these guys, Mr. Key from Key Management and our market makers. Forget about the advisor. These guys are the brains. I've learned things that I've never been. In. I'm so grateful enough. If you told me from beginning, I would be able to do this company from beginning and learn what I've learned. I've done it for free. We have put together an amazing team, correlated people, the best in an industry, not in, in the real world that have made significant, that own their own projects. We have the tokenomics that is, if you guys... And, Unfortunately, not many people understand tokenomics. What drives a price? It's the float, it's the circulating market cap. If we have cliffs in all our releases as well, if at the market cap, if everybody that had tokens that was allowed to dump at the TGE, we would be under a 900,000, not 900 million, 900,000 market cap, under a million market cap. However, most of our friends and family, which we know, probably will not, I'm guessing not financial advice. We don't know what will happen. We're looking at about four to 500,000 market cap because we pretty much have, have a idea of what's happening. To be able to consistently drive the price, a lot of companies don't understand. It's an absolute fraud what's happening in the industry because I've been a part, I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on launch pads and people, I love this about off You guys under promise and over deliver. What they say is, our project made 400X, 1,000X. And you know what? It's absolute bull BS because what they did is put such low float out there. They pumped the price up with the robots. Very few people, as soon as they hit up there, the, the bots came in and smashed the price up. When you look at the project three months down the line, it's lower than the actual uh, seed round, which is unacceptable because the market cap, the tokenomics is all wrong. And for us to come in under million market cap, I'm not talking about uh, price predictions again. Just think about it. To go from a million dollar market cap to 100 million market cap, that's 100x. I'm not saying that's going to happen or not. However, for us to have only 100 million market cap coming up, it wouldn't be a huge surprise because what we have coming up, I'm not saying that's going to happen again. However, working on what we have, knowing exactly how much floats out there, having the key key people in the industry, we know exactly what's going to happen, how much is on the market, how much we have to buy back, what is market. I'm talking in a really high level that it goes over 
0.8% of people's heads because we've done it. I understand this concept. So with us coming, being able to have such incredible people on our team in the background, advising us, teaching me, teaching Adam, which we've been in, I've learned things, maybe like before we finish, just add on why we could get on to the Fortune 100 comes again. No, we, uh, we don't want to drop name. Yeah, so name. I'll, I'll just share with you this. Um, to, to summarize and wrap up, obviously, we appreciate that. Moment. You know, coming from the perspective of an investor, we get to understand things about tokenomics and understand the projects. But the brand new person, obviously, they have no idea. The more advanced, sophisticated investor or participant in the token launch, of course, they're going to really want to know and dig deep into those. And of course, we have a white paper. You guys can go in and you can look at the tokenomics, you can check it out, of course. Um, one, of the, one of the core members of the team, actually, their background was actually in, in graphic security. And if you ever saw the movie, Catch Me If You Can, and understand that technically, most of the time when you go to a bank, there's somebody that created protection for those checks, right? Or you go to a government and a passport, there's protections called graphic security. Same thing with the like high-end fashion items. They have anti anti counterfeit, right? And so they have 50 years of relationships in anti counterfeit. And so they converted that graphic security into digital security. And that's how this was born. Some of these Fortune 100 companies came to them and said, "Hey, can you create this type of technology in the digital, not just the physical, so we can bridge the gap or transcend between the digital and the physical?" They said, "Yeah, we can do it." And that's how we created a patent pending technology that we can utilize. So, but we truly, really appreciate you taking the time and the interest in our project. We thank you so much. And, and uh, we're just absolutely over the moon in regards to what Uplift is doing for us, for your community. You know, feel free to go to our Telegram channel and ask any questions you want. We're constantly monitoring it. We want to make sure that an educated person is the really the best person to be out there communicating a message to the masses. And that's what we want to do is keep everybody educated in what we're doing. And uh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, truly, truly thank, appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for uh, being a part of what we do. It's a journey, and we're very excited about where we're gonna go. And uh, again, thank you so much for Uplift and uh, your members by having such quality projects. And I saw some of the questions you asked, and you know what? People sometimes might ask, just for people out there, why don't you deliver more projects on your platform? As a launchpad, you got to have quality projects for your team. And we realize having projects for sake of having projects, it's not the right way. And we are on few launchpads and seeing the exact question and the intricacies and the level of uh, due diligence you guys do, very, very surprised and excited. So by that, Thank you for your team. Thank you for uh, allowing us to say these few words. And you know what? We are very excited. We're very ambitious. And uh, we're looking forward to do some big things with, uh, with, uh, with Uplift. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me today and all of the insight and the exclusive information that you gave. I love the passion and I love the project and the drive and what you're trying to achieve. So you're trying to, you're saying this is a security centric platform, a marketplace that you're going to be producing. I think you're going to be producing a user centric and security centric uh, platform for everybody. And it's going to be seamless from what you described. It's going to be seamless. It's going to help adoption. It's going to help the newcomers understand the difference between a quality NFT and something that's a knockoff. They're going to know that. And yours is you're going to be basically the stamp of approval across you know, everything. And that's the vision. Um, and it's really exciting. And it's really exciting for us to be part of um, Real. And I'm glad you chose us, um, even though obviously you've been through a vetting process and you're right we've got to be really selective and we can only pick creme de la creme um, and we're really really happy um, to have you on board so thank you again and I love the passion and um, looking forward to having another AMA with you to see where you're at and what's going on so absolutely we look we'll forward to doing an there. AMA with your team and just on a closing note for people that don't understand the real real uh, future of what we have for we haven't touched on basic on this at all because we want to stick with what's around. But OpenSea is evaluated over $22 billion. And there's a huge problem there. For us coming in as security centric, one of our part, one of the people we're working with, Wendley, is gotten, it, it just, you know what? We got so much incredible things to use credit cards, to use things that are simple for the end user and to be able to rival 
some big companies like that for us, that is the future we're looking at. I don't want to touch up much on it, but we got something that's uh, futuristic, very, 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 very big. However, disruptive uh, technology coming down the pipe. We just don't want to let you just out cannot of say everything. But you know what? We look <laughs> forward to get to where we need to get to very, very fast and just hit those milestones one by one. Thank you, Thank you so much, Shiloh. Thank you. You've been phenomenal we really truly appreciate it thank you thank you guys for coming and like i said look forward to seeing you guys and those of our community members that are going to be in dubai for our aibc um conference um mo is going to be there so i'm sure he'll be telling you all the latest developments himself i'm going to try i'm going to try to make it we'll see i hope you can adam it'd be lovely to meet you in person so thank you so much for joining me and i will be in touch to see if uh, you know whenever our community members have another question um to get you know any sort of answers and things like that directly from you updates will be um we'll really look forward to those as well any new partnerships you want to you know send over to us any exclusives you want to share with us um will be all ears so thank you so much for your time and yeah i'll see you on um on xama absolutely okay, have a great day take care bye. Bye -bye.